Whoa. All right. My name is Kirsten Tang, and I'm here to tell you just a little bit about my journey in learning Chinese. Now, if you know anything about Chinese, you should know that there are many dialects. And most of the time, when people say that they speak Chinese, they mean Mandarin. Now, my family actually speaks a dialect called the Ju. Has anyone ever heard of this dialect before? One person. Wow, that's amazing. Um, all right. Now, even though Mandarin and the Ju are both dialects of Chinese, they are not mutually intelligible at all. Um, the Ju is actually my first language. But as I went to school, I spoke more and more English, and eventually, I forgot almost all of it. So this year, I made it my New Year's resolution to relearn the language. So how am I going to do this? Well, if I were learning Mandarin, I have so many resources available to me. I could use Duolingo. I could find online courses. I could even take free classes at my local library. Um, but it's not as easy to learn Thea Chu. Uh, it's definitely not on Duolingo, and I don't think my library even has a single book on the language. Uh, but there are resources out there. Um, I found some apps that actually have Thea Chu dictionaries. Uh, I found some blogs. I found some YouTube videos where they speak Thea Chu. Uh, but the problem was, I was missing a curriculum. I had no curriculum that I could follow, so I really had to make my own. Um, and this was really like a big research project for me. So what I decided to do was to take what I learned and put it in a web app. All right, so even though I do web development at work, I actually never really made my own polished web app before. Um, and I wanted to do this with the hopes of eventually letting other people use this app to help learn this language. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so right now, it's basically a flashcards app. Um, it displays an English word, in this case, seafood. I click on it, and then it shows you the translation. This has a transliteration that's called Peng Im. It also has the Chinese characters and an audio clip if I recorded one. So seafood is hai chi. Um, so you may notice that in this translation, there is an accent mark over the A. And you might be wondering, what does this accent mark even mean? Well. Dichu is a tonal language. That means that the pitch of the sound that you're making affects what the word actually is. Um, so I could say ma, 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 and ma. And those are all different words because they use different tones. Um, so there are eight tones in Dichu. And I could use the tone number to represent the tone. But I found that not very intuitive. So instead, I'm using different accent marks. So for example, the low tone uses a dot underneath the letter, and the high tone uses a line over top of the letter. Um, now, I actually found this kind of a pain to have to type out, so I'm actually inserting it with the tone numbers into the database, and my app transforms that into accent marks before it's displayed. All right, so besides being able to translate just various words, my app can also translate numbers. Um, and it can actually translate all the numbers up to 1,000. Now, I didn't want to have to add 1,000 entries into my database just to be able to do this. Um, but like most other languages, there's really a formula you can use to translate these numbers that are a lot bigger. Uh, for example, 50 translates to ngo chup. This is literally 510. Um, the number 75 literally translates to 7105. And the number 14 is just 104. Um, so basically, all I had to do was write a function that figured out the individual parts of the number, um, translated each of those, and concatenated those together. Uh, but I had one complication in this, and that's tone change. So many words undergo tone change when placed in front of another word. So let's, let's take the number 15, for example. 15 is just 10, 5. 10 is jop, and 5 is ngo, but 15 is jop ngo. And if you listen carefully, you'll notice that the, the, the sound for 10 changed from a high tone to a low tone. Um, so what I had to do when I was creating these translations was I had to make sure when I was linking the words together that I was applying tone change. Um, and for large numbers, every single syllable except the last one undergoes tone change. Um, so the last thing I'm going to show you since I'm running out of time are my phrase flashcards. Uh, so not only do I have words, I also have phrases. So for example, I'm going to the store is wokachi. What I thought is cool about Chinese is that the grammar is really simple. There's no verb conjugation. There's no differentiation between singular and plural. And there's no differentiation between present and past. So really, for translating these sentences, I did basically the same thing that I did with numbers. I figured out the individual parts of the sentence, and I just stitched them together. And I used the same function that I use for translating numbers. All right. 
So since I'm basically out of time, I'm just going to leave you with a link to my app. Um, that's MayLingTang.com. That's actually my middle and my last name. Uh, so I didn't show you everything in my app. I have a lot more stuff in there, and I also have a lot more that I want to add. Um, I didn't actually look at any other language learning software, so if you have any ideas for ways that I could improve this, please come talk to me. And if you want to learn more about the language itself, I'd love to hear that. Thanks. Mm -hmm.